But tonight is the night that my beautiful creature is destined to be born! Right, so since we're in the spooky season, I thought to myself, shall I do an Amiga Halloween related spooky sort of game? Now, I've done video on this a couple of years ago. It was like a top 10 maybe. And the usual games were in there. So you've got like a Fright Night and Dracula and stuff like that. And someone mentioned No Dylan Dog. I was like, never played that before. So I looked into it. And I thought, okay, yeah, it sounds. It's a horrorish game. Let's, let's have a go with it. Now, I've come to play it. Now, it's on me 1200 on WHD load, and this is an out-of-date version of WHD load. Doesn't work. Tried it on the A500 Mini with a new version of it. Doesn't work. Also, I've tried it on ADF and uh, through emulation, and it doesn't work. So I thought, put that one to bed. Now, I was thinking, you know what? A good old classic sort of game, in my opinion, for Halloween is Pinball Dreams and the table being Nightmare. It's got that Halloween feel to it, very horrorish. Um, all the sounds you would expect from a horror slash Halloween type sort of event. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna play that table on this. Now, regular viewers of the channel will know that I built this quite some time ago now. And it is an A500 Mini and it is a C64 Mini from Retro Games. And it is encased in an old Amiga 500 case. Spray painted green and black. I have done a video on it and I will link this in the description. And you're probably wondering why is the uh, thing missing there. But what I do with this is, I'll just get it because I haven't really glued it on. It's a little window. So the whole thing reads, and I should really glue it on, you know what I mean? So let me see if I'll just, emulation inside. Now it's lit up. I've actually disconnected the lights because they were a pain in the bloody ass. It kept them falling off. So you've got your A500 Mini there and you've got your C64 Mini there. The C64 Mini is outputted there at uh, HDMI, all powered by a power bank and I've had it now for quite a while and it just sits out the way sort of like just you know doing nothing and I thought I better get it out today and see if it still works because I don't even know if it works but the beauty of this one is now is I'm going to try and play Pinball Dreams not with the it well, not with the controller for the A500 connected I'm going to play it with that because that keyboard works on the A500 Mini and the reason why it works, and I'll quickly show you, although I've tingled it in a video, let's take the window out. So that little thing you see in the middle there, that little device connects to uh, an A500, Amiga 500 keyboard, and makes that keyboard work with the A500 Mini. So it's just, oh, I can just see it there. Now I got this from Carl Dyson, 
uh, aka Retro32 and I'm not sure if you still got them in stock but check his website out and I'll link it in the description. Quite a nice piece of hardware, it makes the keyboard as I say work with that so you don't have to use the virtual keyboard that's on the A500 Mini um, and it, it works beautifully as well so we're going to try that today if not we're going to be playing it on the controller but either way we're going to be playing the nightmare table of pinball dreams today right so welcome to pinball dreams now the reason why i'm playing it on the a500 mini is because it's one of the inbuilt games so i thought you know what showcase this off again and play nightmare so music wise i'm gonna have to watch it because i'm sure i've done a video on one of these a while ago and i got a copyright claim i think it i'm sure it was for nightmare or this background music i don't know i'm pretty sure it was nightmare but anyway, before we before we crack on, so we have the A500 Mini connected to the original Amiga 500 keyboard via Carl Dyson's adapter. And it's quite simple. F4 takes you right to the table. No messing around. It works as it should. No installation uh, software, just run it as it should. And as we see, the table here, which is graveyard, and we'll select F1 for one player. And then just before we get into it, two shifts. You can use, if you want, the controller that the, the A500 Mini come with. As you can see there, it, it'll do that. Also, two shift buttons work as they should. So let's crack on. Obviously the ball release. And let's have a go at Nightmare. I mean, I've got some fun memories of this game as well. And I probably mentioned it in a video I've done in the past, but me, my brother, and my mate at the time, when I lived in my mum and dad's house in uh, Toxteth, we just literally play this game every, every night. And it gets to like sort of half eight, and we'd go with the chippy around the corner, and we'd get curry rice and chips, and we would literally sit there all night and play this and try and get the highest score. And it was just... Uh, just one of those, you know, sort of great Amiga memories for me. And you never get that now because, you know, when you're grown up, you've got things to do. And um, it's just the way, unfortunately, the way life is, you know, takes people. But it's great just to have a setup like this or just, you know, just general machine so you can play these kind of games and relive them, them memories again. But this was one of my favourite tables. Ignition, I didn't like and I still don't like. Steel Wheel, I don't like as well. Uh, but Beatbox is a fantastic table, really fantastic table. I think I'll probably have a couple of games on this because I do quite like this table. Spacebar works as well to shake the table. There we go. Do do. Do 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 do. Have another game. We'll have another game. So, this machine you see here, this glorious A500 slash C64, it's not a hybrid, it's a a dual console computer kind of thing. The keyboard doesn't work with the C64, by the way. But in the video that I've done about the machine, there, there is a way around that. So by all means, I'll, uh, I'll, well, I'll link it in the description and you can... Uh, what? You can watch it as well. But I was going to sort of deconstruct this machine and have my two little consoles on display. But I thought, no, I'll leave them as they are. I've got, and I've still got to this day, what Retro Games Limited uh, gifted me was a, a, a Maxi, a C64 Maxi. So I do use that, even though it's not on display. And the price of the A500 Mini has now come down. So I could possibly, may possibly buy one. I think they're about 64, 70 pound now. And I might just get one. Because I, I like to keep this as it is, because it took me a while to build, and it cost me for the parts and stuff, you know, a little bit of money, and it's, uh, it does get used, don't get me wrong. And it's just nice to look at, and I have these two little systems, albeit emulated, in, uh, in an original 
Amiga 500 case. Painted up in my favorite colors as well. I like to call it Hunter, well it's Hunter Green. Again, done a video on, on a Hunter car years ago and the paint that I actually used was called Hunter Green. I thought, happy days. So I've done a video on that and uh, I'll probably link that as well. But yeah, so Halloween games, as I say, I, I couldn't think, you know, what, what, what games are sort of like, they don't get much attention. So you've got like Christmas games, you've got your Robo card, you've got Lemmings or Christmas Lemmings. And Halloween games, you get your normal, you know, uh, games of that. But no one really sort of, as I say, Dylan Dog, no one mentions that. And as I say, it's just a shame I couldn't do a video on it. But this is the next best thing. And I think probably, if not better. So, but we're really, really good table, this. Really good table. Not, not too bad, that, actually. Is that it? Ah. Yeah, well, I'll wrap it up there because I'm not going to put you through any more gameplay of uh, whatever. Escape button as well works, and you can just see there, yes or no, and we quit back out to the main menu of the um, the A500 Mini. So, how do we get out of this now? So, basically, that's it. There's no other games on this I would deem. Let me see. Probably Alien Breathe, maybe? Could that get classed? Could that be classed as a, as a Halloween horror game? I suppose so. I suppose so. But there's no keys required on that, so, yeah. Yeah, there's not really nothing else on here that I could deem like uh, a Halloween game. The main one, the main focus of today was the was the table on Pinball Dreams, or uh, a quick one before I go, maybe. Um, no. Titus the Prox. I did have me thingo in before. I've took it out, though, because that was what I put in for um, Dylan Dog. Retro Games actually sent me two of them a while ago. So, and incidentally, while I'm here, here is the Maxi that Retro Games Limited kindly sent me quite a while ago. Still gets used to this day and still a fantastic box and machine. Um, so yeah, that does still get used. Box for me, the little mini one is up there, the cat's sat in front of it. And then I've got these two stubby things which Retro Games also sent me when they sent me the C64 Maxi. One of them has been uh, updated with the with the latest firmware and I put load quite a lot of games on there so cat stop messing with the Halloween lights please come on get down girl yeah so um yeah there's nothing else I want to show you on this really I say I've done a video on that I'll link it in the description go and have a look it took me quite a long time to make and cost not a lot really but you know yeah the A500 mini is now well, both of their machines in there, C64 and A500, they're powered by a, a massive 10,000 milliwatt power bank, which is just underneath the, here. It's all encased and there's a there's a USB hub and, and all that. Go and check the video out and go and have a look. And happy Halloween. Right, so again, that was a look at my A500 slash C64 console. It's not hybrid, it's a dual computer emulated console Frankenstein machine as I say link in description um, yeah all is good in the hood there uh, people have asked me actually in the past do I still use it have I still got it yes I have still got it as you can see it doesn't get used all the time and it's not always on display it's like now the Amiga 1200 is not on display it's put on a shelf and when I want to use it I just take it off and think oh, I don't really have nothing on display because my cats are quite destructive and they do like to sit on things and I don't want a cat, a big fat cat sat on me 1200 or on that machine I've just spent X amount of money to, to build and stuff like that. So um, it, it, it does get used and I do use it, you know, on a, not a regular basis, but every now and then when I'm feeling a little bit sort of nostalgic and I actually do quite like, originally in the past, I didn't like that. 
but I bloody like it now. It's it's a really, really good piece of, um, well, it's a nice addition to that, you know, so, yeah, all's good in the hood there. Um, as I say, I was going to do some more Halloween stuff, but there's no point. Everyone's covered it over the years of YouTube, of Halloween games and, and you know, just the same old sort of games pop up and, and that. So maybe at Christmas time, I might do Lemmings or I might do another Christmas related game on this machine because people are quite impressed and they're quite intrigued on how this keyboard sorry, adapter works. It just works. Plug it in and away you go. I mean, I know Carl, I think Carl had his separately aside, but it still works, doesn't matter you know, how you use it. It's just that I come up with this idea quite a while ago of having this old uh, 500 case just battered and a, just a little idea and it's, I'm quite happy with it. I am quite happy with it. It's uh, it's emulation at the end of the day and I know people frown on it and all <coughs> the purists, whatever. But yeah, any, anyway, enough about that. Link in the description, go and watch it. And as always, happy Halloween and thanks for watching. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Siri.